Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. And friends, this is a topic that kind of leans more in the self-care realm, but let's be real, this does bleed over into every single aspect of your life, both personally and professionally. I want to talk about your immune system. How have you been feeling lately? I mean, like, really? Really? Over the last few months with the COVID-19 pandemic um, and many of us in lockdown all around the world, our lives have changed in every single aspect, how we work, where we work, um, how we take care of ourselves and our regular routines when it comes to food and exercise, sleep and stress and all of that. So I wanted to find just the right expert to help us simplify how to boost our immune system. And that, my friends, is Dr. Uma Naidu. Now, Michelin star chef David Bouley describes her as the world's first triple threat in the food as medicine space. She's a Harvard-trained psychiatrist, professional chef, and a nutrition specialist. Her niche work is actually specifically in nutritional psychiatry, and she's regarded both nationally and internationally as a medical pioneer in this field. Now, she's been seen all over. Wall Street Journal, ABC News, Harvard Health Press, Goop, and so many others. And she really has a special interest on the impact of food on mood and other mental health conditions. She's also the author of the upcoming book, This Is Your Brain on Food, showing the cutting-edge science explaining the ways in which food contributes to our mental health and can treat and prevent a wide range of health issues. We're talking ADHD, anxiety, depression, OCD, and more. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Dr. Uma Naidu. Hey, Dr. Uma. Hi, Mary. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so I, glad I you're appreciate here. appreciate that. Yes, of course. And, you, you know, I feel like this is such an important topic to talk about. And anybody that's listening, grab a journal, grab a pen. I feel like you're about to be this fountain of wonderful <laughs> knowledge that we so. <laughs> all need. And let's just be real, Uma. Like, it's stressful right now, to say the oh least, goodness. right? Absolutely. So why do you think it's so important to focus on boosting our immune system? I mean, especially now. Absolutely. So, you know, there's sort of um, before pandemic times and there's moving forward is how I think about it, because mm. they, you know, we still not not entirely clear and we're hopeful about the pandemic. Um, and the reason I, I split it up like that is that people who were previously um, pretty healthy and from a mental standpoint, really not someone who suffered with anxiety, depression, things have really not felt good for people um, yeah. during the pandemic and more people are feeling stressed and more people are feeling uh, down, uh, anxious, symptoms are on the rise. And in the U.S., we have a shortage of medication called Zoloft, sertraline, uh, which also speaks to the very enhanced number of prescriptions that have been going on through the pandemic. Yeah. We don't yet have the data on exact numbers of the rise, but as psychiatrists practicing, we know that it's increased. Mm. Where the immune system becomes so vital here is that it's not just linked to your physical health. And part of my book really breaks down for people the fact that we know we should eat differently for hypertension. We know we should change our diet if we have elevated cholesterol. But many people don't take that to the mental health realm. Many people don't make that connection um, while, while people say very often, oh, you are what you eat, they don't really realize it's related to mood, anxiety, and many, many other mental health symptoms. And that's where the immune system comes into play because all of this is mediated through the gut-brain connection. Yep. And a very large portion of our immune system is in the gut. So, you know, I think that it becomes important from that perspective to take care of ourselves moving forward. Mm, and that reminds me of a previous conversation I had with Dr. Daniel on how to improve your gut health. Um, and that, mm -hmm. you know, he mentioned also the gut brain axis. So tell us once again, yes. what does that mean? Absolutely. So, you know, when, when people, when we look in the mirror, we don't really think, you know, except for being in the same body, the brain and the gut are pretty far apart. Yeah. But embryologically speaking, uh, going back to before we were born, these uh, sperm, zygote, uh, uh, sperm and egg formed a zygote and cells started to form and our organs started to form. And as they formed from those same two cells, a vagus nerve emerged. And that vagus nerve up until now 
connects the actual gut to the brain. Mm. And it becomes almost a pathway, a freeway, a highway of um, neurochemical and biological information that gets transmitted up and down. So it's almost like this communicating pathway between the gut and the brain. So when you eat something and it goes into your stomach, your gut, and it, it starts the process of whatever's going to happen to it and the breakdown of food, there are ways in which good choices in terms of food, high fiber foods, fresh vegetables and fruit, um, even frozen, as long as there's no sugar added or added salt or syrup, um, are, are good. They mm -hmm. help the good bugs. They therefore help your immunity. Is the is is the most is one of the probably this is called the simplified podcast. Mm -hmm. But so it, it kind of is very simply. You eat the good food, it feeds the good bugs, and that keeps you in a good balance. And you eat the bad foods, and the opposite happens. So, Dr. Uma, I'm going to admit right now on the podcast, my brain goes coffee and shortbread cookies uh, and tacos. These are the things that we need today, Mary. So let's make that yes. happen, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so how do we how do we rewire our, our gut brain access to start to actually see the good foods that, that um, are actually good for us rather than right. immediately having the knee-jerk reaction and wanting the sugar, the caffeine, right. the deep right. fried, whatever. Exactly. So, you know, speaking of the current times, um, that, that stress level that we're feeling, that sense of angst, that certainty, yeah. um, you know, lack of financial safety, so many things that are going on, so much of the things that are unknown. Mm. People are naturally stressed and that whole reaction of the excess cortisol in our body and the stress reaction also then helps us make really poor choices and we get into these sort of bad habits when we feel stressed. But here's the thing about it. It's, people really aren't to blame because the immediate feeling is you feel good. You know, mm. that, that shortbread cookie and coffee tastes and feels good, at least for a good half hour. Then you don't think about it and you move on to the rest of your day. The issue, Mary, is that it's the long-term effect of those choices. You don't, in the immediate time, you feel good. The actual, actual reaction chemically the serotonin does take a bump, um, and you, you feel okay. But it's the long-term negative effects of this that lead to the inflammation um, in your gut that then can, can spread through that pathway and cause new inflammation in your brain. Mm. And, you know, poor food choices are linked to depression, to anxiety, to ADHD. They're linked to so many disorders through that gut mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I say to people, rather than making those things a habit, because habit circuits in our brain are also set, get set up, and we what we're talking about is almost re, rewiring that, like rethinking how do we make better choices. Yep. And for me, I, I say to people, rather have, um, have a treat day once a week so mm -hmm. that you have the cookies you like, and it's, maybe it's the ice cream, the pizza, whatever it is that you crave, the mac and cheese, um, enjoy it on that day. But then, you know, reset at the next meal or the next day. Mm. And obviously pay attention to portion control. You know, I'm not saying eat, eat three pizzas. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying, <laughs> you know, enjoy, enjoy what you usually would, but yeah. make that your treat day so that you don't feel deprived. Yeah. Because what happens, happens if you say to people, well, don't eat this and don't eat that, I, I, I don't really like the word diet. Um, you know, I, I say to people, can, can we cut back on this? Can we exchange that? Can we use these foods instead of that? And... You know, what, what's your favorite food? Why don't you pick a day of the week and continue to have that? Yeah. But if you, can, if you can work on the other days and the other meals being really careful about the added sugars, the added sodium, you know, the wrong types of fats, all of that, and add in fiber, um, all the nutrients that come from beans, legumes, uh, fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds, you can, it, it'll balance out. Yeah. It'll balance out without you having the, the negative effect. And I really, really want to at the um, little bit later in the conversation to give people an idea of like how to stock your pantry, what are the good foods, what are the, the you know, get really down to brass tacks there. But before we get there, um, I also wonder, I mean, you know, I've had a few conversations about it. I've obviously seen my own uh, eating patterns and my own mental wellness um, and how it, it directly is linked. And I 100% agree. I also wonder though, in this day and age of busy. We eat food so unconsciously now. We eat food while we're typing an email. We eat food in a car on the way to uh, somewhere else. You know, that food, the actual 
art uh, and and process the ritual if you will of of having a meal is so like not even linked into time space and reality you don't even taste yeah. the food you're just shoveling it in your mouth just so you can exactly. get to your your two o'clock appointment is there yeah. part of that that's also at play here that that needs the rewiring of of how we approach the the ritual of of preparing and eating food absolutely that's an excellent point Mary, because i think that modern day life um, and doctors are very guilty of this because we're always running and eating and standing and eating and walking right. and talking and eating yeah. um, and it's really it's a bad habit that we need to change but it's, it's sort of changing from mindless eating to mindful eating yeah. right it's, it's how do you set up your day and perhaps this pause that we are experiencing uh, due to the pandemic almost you know imposed for, for very important health reasons is an opportunity to reset in some of those ways. So yeah. if you're working from home, even though you know you, you would have the whole family at home and in that way it can be more stressful, uh, it's not that we don't love our families, but it, it, it just adds to a different kind of work, um, work schedule and work day. Yeah. But this may be an opportunity to reset around those things. Maybe it's just for you. Maybe your, your, the other part of your family helps during the day and you take care of the, the, those responsibilities in the evening. Yep. And so maybe if you break it down to how can I make sure that I get my breakfast in, my lunch in. And sometimes it's actually a, it's, it's, it's as basic as it may seem silly, but sometimes it's actually scheduling in those things to improve self-care because mm. – you know, and I do think self care has different components, but even scheduling, well, you know, if I get up at five, I get up at six or whatever it is, I'm going to have breakfast between maybe this 15 or half hour break, yeah. which allows you to prepare the breakfast if you need to, plus eat it mindfully. I'm not going to be checking my email at that point, watching the news or anything. And it's up to you to make that decision. Yeah. Um, same thing with lunch. You know, you, you shut the computer off uh, in this virtual world of ours and you decide I'm going to go make that healthy salad or Maybe I prepared it this morning or the night before, and same thing with dinner. Yeah. If the whole family is involved, I usually say to people, still schedule it, and then, you know, build in a fun activity at that time. And by that, I mean, enjoy it. You know, yeah. take a step back from your work, shut off the phone, you know, um, unless you have a beep and you're on call, I, I do understand that, that that's a different level of responsibility. But if you, mm-hmm. if you can do that, perhaps try to build it in in a very in a very um, deliberate way yeah because your mind then you know it l- like it picks up the 10 a.m meeting it's going to say oh lunchtime okay let me go do that and i think that switching sets in terms of just how the the brain wiring works is also good for you mm. you switch sets you leave the computer you go have your your lunch um and you come back you know and you feel somewhat refreshed um, and somewhat, somewhat ready. But I, I do, I, I so agree that we have to, we have to change that dynamic. Mm, and it sounds like, from what I hear you say, there is a reprioritization of eating and food prep altogether. You know, because I think for a lot of us, especially entrepreneurs, we kind of put that at the very bottom of our to do list. But when you give the your lunch, your breakfast, the same weight and priority as your client calls or meetings, then that is built into your schedule. I mean, I, for example, everything lives and dies on my Google Calendar. If it doesn't exist on the Google Calendar. It doesn't happen in my world. Exactly. So, you know, That's a great point. you know, I put it into my calendar as well. So that means that when I hand out my scheduler link to clients or um, otherwise, then th- there's no chance of them ever booking in when is a meal. So it's simple little shifts and adjustments there that also set you up for success rather than going, oh, crap, I have a call in five minutes and I haven't eaten lunch and it's already right. two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And I, and I don't know maybe if you experienced this during the pandemic, but many of my, my clients have said Sunday becomes Monday and I didn't even realize the weekend passed right. by because everyone's home. And, you know, it might just be that you don't have a Zoom meeting on a Sunday, but it, it, that dynamic is of flow mm. uh, has, has broken down the structure of our work days. Yeah. And so it could also be an opportunity, you know, as a psychiatrist, I'm very used to reframing things and helping people with the psychological aspect of it. And maybe it's reframing it and it's saying, mm. okay, so whatever day of the week it is, I don't care if it's Sunday or maybe Sunday is a more relaxed day or your treat day, yeah. but building it in is so important because then you don't, you don't forget it. 
Yeah. You know, and you get a reminder. <laughs> yeah. And, and as you say, you know, changing your environment, whether it's um, getting up from your desk and going to a table or going out to the back garden and sitting in the sunshine, getting a little bit of vitamin D doesn't hurt. So exactly. I know um, from looking at your website and from your book, there are five key areas to what you call for better brain health. Now, mm-hmm. I want you to tell us in very, very simple terms, because these are very professional, very like medical industry kind of um, big words, let's just say. Sure. <laughs> so, so I want you to sure. simplify so, them so, down. Sure. So so the way I'll talk about it is in... Um, it is in basic terms, and I'll tell. I'll give you kind of pointers to to pay attention to. So we Great. we touched on how to pay attention to immunity, and and I speak about something that I call an emotional immunity. And the big word here is that you know there have been studies in psychoimmunology mm-hmm. that have linked the have linked the gut and the mood. But for our purposes, it really comes down to what are you consuming. How is it affecting your gut brain axis and how is it affecting your immunity? Because there are so many immune cells right there in your gut that get impacted. And what you want to prevent is a negative imbalance of your gut bacteria. So there are about 39 trillion bugs in our gut. Some some doctors will even say there are more, we are more we are more bacteria than we are human cells. <laughs> um, there's actually a paper on that. But you know, the, the reality is that they live they live down there. And if you take care of them, they'll take care of you. So, mm-hmm. so I simplify the emotional immunity around eat the right way, fiber-rich foods, fi- you know, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, yeah. legumes, beans, that type of thing that's really going to help feed the good guys. Um, and you're going to get a lot of nutrients from those foods as you do it. It also then leads to the process of um, if, if you're not doing that, if you, you know, you're eating the French fries and many people don't realize that fast food French fries in the U.S. have added sugar, for example. So you may think, you know what, I'm getting the small size and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting the salad with this meal. But the, the fact of the matter is the uh, poor fats, the uh, oils that are used in that, all of the wrong stuff in the processing start to cause inflammation. Yeah. And the inflammation in, in your gut leads to neuroinflammation. What what that really means is that think about that vagus nerve again and the bad substances that are supposed to really not be traveling to your brain are impacting your ability to the, for the happy hormone, serotonin, and others to work properly. Mm. And the other things that can happen is you develop a leaky gut. And what the you know the medical term for that is intestinal permeability, meaning that literally, you know, the not so good stuff, let's just say, is leaking out and starting to. Co- this is how inflammation spreads in your body. Yeah. So it's something you you want to avoid. Then there's um, neurooxidative stress and a few other things, but I'll I'll focus on these three. So the neurooxidative stress is also related to how you eat. Yeah. For example, if you um, you know, pay attention to foods that are brightly colored. You've often heard people say, eat the, eat the color of the rainbow. But why is that? Mm. When, you, when you break it down, it's because of the polyphenols, the flavonols, the, the um, carotenoids, all of the bright color. You know, think about uh, peppers and, and carrots and, and eggplant, all of these types of colorful vegetables. The, the wider the range of colors you eat, the better it is because the antioxidant boost in those vegetables is super important. Mm. The other important thing to do is to add back in things like prebiotic foods and probiotic foods. And those, um, including fermented foods, again, go to really build up the army of immunity you have going on in your gut because they're feeding those bugs with the right food to strengthen up instead of the bad bugs taking over. You know, you eat sugar and you eat processed foods and and chips and snacks and, and pastries, you know, the bad bugs are like having a party. They're like, mm-hmm. yay, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm taking over. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, in the, moment, in the moment you don't feel anything. You yeah. know, your body goes on and you don't feel anything. You may sort of, uh, some people may say, oh, I regret having that meal. But that's not it. it it's the longer term effects that build up. Mm. And, you know, those those are um, those are sort of the tenets of, of, of how we try to describe the, the different conditions in the book. And what we've done is we've broken it down by the different diagnoses. And we try to give them, you know, give some fun names and terms and make it a little more lighthearted, but yeah. really look at a lot of science behind this to share with people foods to embrace 
and foods to avoid. Mm. So every chapter, you know, if say you have one condition and that's the one you care about, you just go to that chapter because sometimes there's, there are also foods that go into many different categories yeah. across the different chapters. Um, and then you, you know, you know immediately, these are the things I want to stay away from. And we also have a recipe chapter. So mm. at the end, you know, we, we talk about what, what we're going to come on to later on about stocking your kitchen, how to eat, how to prepare uh, meals, and we have recipes to match every chapter. So, so. great. Well, I do want to point out, uh, you mentioned fermented foods, and that, yes. I have to tell you, has been one of the plus sides of this pandemic for me. Um, so <laughs> I have uh, long enjoyed kombucha as a drink um, for years and years and years now, but I yes. actually took the dive this spring to um, actually begin to brew it myself which is That's quite exciting. Awesome. Oh, it's, it's very exciting. A, a friend of mine down in London sent me the SCOBY, which is the living organism. And uh, if anybody that's listening to this has ever been curious about kombucha, not only to drink, but also to create your own, let me tell you, I was so nervous at first, but it is so ridiculously simple to create and so cost effective. I used to buy bottles of kombucha for, you know, five, six dollars, you know, four or five pounds every single time and now I'm making like gallons upon gallons of this it's stuff awesome. and it's it's so good and it really I tell you um yep. uh, for me kombucha is uh, it's kind of like a fizzy almost vinegary kind of drink but it really I know when I drink a little bit of it at a time my stomach is so much happier my digestive system is working better awesome. and I will say one step further I have found that kombucha is a perfect alternative to a bottle of beer or a glass of wine at the end of the yeah. night. Yeah, because um, it's fermented. Exactly. Yeah, it's, and got it's, that, yeah. it's got a little bit of a fizz to it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. uh, you know. That is cool. And, and yeah. I think that that has been a healthy change and alternative. No, I will <laughs> say, Dr. Uma, because my children make fun of me. I have actually given my kombucha a name. Her name is Elixa. And I, I do talk it, to Elixa. I know. I, I do it. talk to her. Just the the same as you would talk to a plant that you know needs right. that, to that, thrive that needs some nurturing to grow absolutely it is literally a living organism so anyways uh there's that i, I commend you on that and i i'm so glad to hear that you noticed a difference because absolutely. you know it's it's I, I say i say to people all this time we can we can look at this 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 uh needing to kind of isolate at home in one or two of two ways right yeah. we can say it's horrible we can't see our friends and we can get on all sorts of media to be in touch with them. But how can you use the time in a good way? You know, making kombucha, I love that story. You yeah. know, what what can we ferment or do or, uh, uh, you know, uh, for our families, ourselves, that will, will help. And I also mm -hmm. really like the fact that you picked up on that fermentation and, and it mm. could be, you know, maybe have a glass of kombucha instead of a beer, or maybe switch it out once in a while. You know. Yeah, and that's it. And you the know, I think habit. exactly. Yeah. And it, it takes time, and uh, you know, to create a new habit and stick to it. But I think it's also something that's kind of wonderful as like a little um, kind of experiment for the family. So you know, my son will drink a little bit, and and my daughter's she sticks her nose up to it. She just thinks it's weird, which is fine, <laughs> absolutely fine. Um, I know that maybe uh, ten years ago I would be the same exact way with sauerkraut right. or pickles or anything else so um you know it takes time um, it, it takes time it take, and it takes a little effort to get set up and to do it and you're the, you're home so you have the opportunity yes. to do it yes um so let's dive into the brass tacks so what do you feel are good foods to embrace and what food should we avoid in order for us to have a stronger immunity okay. Um, that's a great question. So, so the one, one thing I will say, May, that compared to the beginning of the pandemic um, to where we are now, we also understand that there's something about this virus that can cause an inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I, you know, I, I want to preface this discussion by also saying that we now know um, things a little bit differently. So, you know, I wouldn't go in the direction of let me buy these five supplements or even five foods and mm. eat tons of them because I really want my immunity to be higher. Yeah. Because here's the reality of how we should be eating. You know, in the U.S., we, we call it the standard American diet, and it's, it's sort of embarrassingly bad. You know, it's, it's a lot of processed foods, oils, pastries, bread, cereals, and things that, you know, don't, in other words, we, we just aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables and healthy foods here. So I would say that the best way to start is 
if you if kind of check in with yourself and if you're not eating a good diet what are the small tweaks you can make can you start to include more fresh fruits and vegetables legumes nuts and seeds every single day why do i keep saying that because the fiber helps your gut why does why does it help your gut it helps the good bugs and those good bugs help your immunity it's 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 a simplified it's as simple as that so think about what you're eating that you that you know if if you're having that great shortbread cookie and coffee every day maybe less often yeah. um you know if it's something else just less frequently and then include the fresh fruits and vegetables that you can high vitamin c uh, foods are citrus fruits yeah. uh, red bell pepper is one of the highest in vitamin c so that's always a good one um you know be conscious of vitamin d because that helps you as well so sunlight um and here's the cool thing about vitamin d is direct sunlight not not through a window uh, mm. or, or or when you're driving none of that actually counts they've actually found that it helps to get a little bit of sun of course sunblock all of that good stuff but just just a way to absorb that and get it into your body yep. so some simple things are check your diet make some adjustments and i say to everyone don't do everything at once you can't go from pizza ice cream um you know chips uh, chips and snacks um and lots of cookies to today i'm just going to have all of these different foods because you're not going to enjoy it yeah. yeah you know that that's just unrealistic so stop to tweak one thing i would say to people especially during the these times say you um you know went through a phase where um there were fresh fruits and vegetables available but people were couldn't get to supermarkets or and i would say get frozen uh, vegetables and fruit if it if it comes with a little little bag that has sauce in it ignore that and you can steam up some broccoli carrots um you know beans legumes um, edamame whatever it is even in the microwave and add a couple of steamed vegetables to your dinner and to your lunch every single day yep and you can do it and simply squeeze a bit of lemon on it and have added back foods that are really going to help you so something is simple those simple tweaks even if you make one habit change a week for you and your entire family makes a difference and then and then you sort of build it up and what i will do is create sort of a personalized nutrition plan for the person who's sitting in front of me and work with them around what they're doing what they it's also important to understand what their family is eating i had a client who was eating healthy but there was a snack cupboard for the kids yeah. and what would happen is he would after he had his healthy meal you get to the snack cupboard mm-hmm. so what was you know what was um what was happening is that he was then in, in, you know absorbing and eating a lot more unhealthy calories so i say simple tweaks start start the add back healthy foods um you know fermented foods prebiotics and probiotics those are sort of your basic armor prebiotics are found in things like onions garlic um radish juice lamata chok um hickama and you know they have the type of fiber that's good and helps the good the good bugs in your gut mm. and then you know the probiotic rich foods if you're having things like dairy, you know yogurt that's made from um, dairy sources just make sure they have the active life cultures and no added sugars because you know in in the US we have um our food labels are in grams but we bake in pounds and ounces mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that 4 grams is 1 teaspoon of sugar so if you having a yogurt that's that size and you're thinking this is great for my gut you know dr uma said so uh, it could also have 18 grams of sugar yeah. so if it's a fruity yogurt you want to be careful of that yeah we we stick to the basics and the staples and that you know to be fair uh we've been living in in England for 6 years now has really changed how we eat as a family on a whole um we eat more whole foods than ever before but just because the concept of fast food just isn't a thing here um mm-hmm. but you know we stick to the the basics like raw almonds um that's in our snack cupboard uh sugar snap peas that are raw carrots mm-hmm. um you know uh, my son eats about 3 dozen apples a week you know uh, he, He eats a lot of apples. Uh probably not that many. That's an exaggeration. But, you know, and 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 plain um Greek yogurt. So these are the staples in our household. We also have uh frozen awesome. frozen fruits. Um so right. that can be plopped onto some yogurt or in a smoothie fairly easily. Frozen mango, blueberry, mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. something called breakfast topper, which is like mango um and uh papaya and things like awesome. that. And you know, I think you're right on with the, when it comes to frozen foods because I think I think for me at least especially living in the UK where our refrigerators are very 
tiny. Yes, um, yeah. Having fresh enough space in your fridge for fresh fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. is tricky. Oh, like a whole bunch of broccoli. It's right, not, because it's it, not will, that easy. it will go off before you actually have enough time to prep and yeah. cook it. You yeah. know, another thing that's been working for us is my, my son's vegetarian. Um, he's 10 years old and uh, he's the only veggie in our house. Um, but, you know, he influences the rest of the way the rest of us eat. So I've found over the last few months of lockdown is that we're just not eating red meat uh, Mm -hmm. anymore. And so we've been Mm -hmm. able to eliminate that fairly easy. But if you are a family that is reliant on hamburger and meatloaf and tacos and things, even just having one day a week, that's a meat-free Monday, if you will. Absolutely. The other thing is, I should say, the easy thing to incorporate, because we were talking about simplifying it for everyone, would be to add back spices. Mm -hmm. Because they're low calorie, no salt added. So we're not talking about the ones that are on a blend that have sodium or salt added. But things like turmeric and black pepper, you can add that to a smoothie, you can add that to a soup if you don't usually cook with it. Um, and it's it's also, you know, there have been studies that looked at it being antiviral. So mm-hmm. it has some fantastic properties. It's good for your gut. It's good for anxiety. Um, it's good for your mood um, from my perspective. But it also has so many other health benefits that are simple, simple to do. That's interesting. I've never tried black pepper in a smoothie. I'll have to go for the challenge and report so, back. So, so, so let, let me let me explain that a second. <laughs> so, so the so the active ingredient in curcumin is um, in, in turmeric is curcumin, yeah. not to be confused with cumin, which is a different a different spice. And so the curcumin, the absorption is activated by piperin, mm. which is in black pepper. So a quarter teaspoon of um, turmeric a day, if, if it's not something you cook with, like I said, put it in a smoothie, and you just need a pinch of black pepper, you won't even taste it. Okay. Um, if you add in some blueberries and stuff, you won't taste it. But it's just a it's just a healthy, easy thing to do. Well, that is a challenge for all of us, to just pop in a little bit of turmeric into a smoothie and see if anybody notices. I started sneaking in uh, raw spinach into my kids' smoothies. Yeah. They have yeah. no clue. Don't tell them. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it and, works. You know, if you put in spinach, you, you won't even notice the colors. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, chicken soup is another good one, or vegetable soup, whatever, whichever one you make. Yeah. Um, are easy ways to just start to switch those habits that become, you know, become automatic, automatic healthy habits. So. Okay. So, but here's the thing, Dr. Irma. I mean, I think we've all heard, many, many people have told us over and over and over again, it's like, okay, just eat better, exercise more, sleep more, stress less, and you'll be fine, right? Exactly. We know that that's what we're supposed to do, but then mm-hmm. actually creating those actual habits, uh, positive habit changes, like, why is it that it doesn't stick? Like, what can we do to actually make this stick this time? So I think for, for one thing, um, I, I believe that all of this time can be used as an opportunity. You know, there, there are habits, there are stress circuits in our brain. Mm. And basically, when you develop unhealthy habits brought on by stress, they tend to stick in a certain cycle. You almost yeah. have to trick yourself into healthier habits, whether it is that you do simple things, like you change what's in your snack cabinet. So unlike the the client that I had who was going for the cookies and the Doritos that his kids were taking to school, but, you know, those were the choices they were making, but he was into that. Mm -hmm. If he now had transformed his cabinet the way that you have for your family, there wouldn't be those cookies and pastries for him to grab onto. Yeah. So those are probably some of the, what I consider to be, for want of a nicer word, environmental controls. So you really restock your home in a way that you don't have those unhealthy foods available, but you have them maybe, maybe on your treat day, you you bring those foods in on that day. You yeah. know, you buy them for that day and they're not, they're not there all the time. I find that people really start to make a change in how they eat when they start to feel a difference. It's like you mentioned the kombucha experience. Mm -hmm. Two things that it did, it it was an amazing experience to have this, but you enjoy it. It kind of had a little bit of a taste of beer, but you felt good. Your your tummy felt good when you drank it. Those are the things that help people make a, a, a change in what they eat. So you absolutely right, mate. People say eat this and don't eat that, and you know, you know, this is this is a good food. It's really exhausting. It, it, you know, it, it pe- people feel like, what are you telling me that for? Is it really going to change? It's really about to make these positive changes 
if, it, say, for example, your gut is inflamed or you have bowel issues or you have irritable bowel or you have symptoms that are discomfort, uncomfortable, sometimes those individuals end up in my office because they present with anxiety and panic and they mm-hmm. refer from their gastroenterologist. But in fact, when you really unpack the information, they're having an, an inflammation in their gut. And when you slowly and steadily start to teach them healthy habits, and I usually do, you just need to change one thing this week. And it could be that you're, you're drinking enough water. Yeah. And that could be just a healthy habit that you start to integrate. You've got the fruit juices or the, the, the soda, if you're having that. Um, less coffee, still enjoy it. You know, bring back things like green tea because those things and other teas are going to bring back healthy, you know, how many things... I also like to, to help people make the habit change when they realize this is how much I can eat mm. compared to that. Yeah. You know, this is how many nutrients I'm going to get from here and avoid the, um, the the cookies or whatever it is. I understand there's, there's that deliciousness that they want from a treat, but it, it, you, you almost have to unpack it for people and either show them so show them visual ideas of how to do it. And it's not, it's not that... It's not that people don't know, it's that sometimes you just need it broken down. You know, it's like that quarter teaspoon of turmeric with a pinch of black pepper, or it's how much of yogurt should I have? Should I, you know, should I have blueberries at work? What's the serving size? You know, just making it easy so that they can go through the the changes. But when they notice themselves feeling good, maybe their tummy feels bad, maybe they have fewer headaches, maybe they notice. I had someone over the uh, period of the pandemic who started to who said to me, you won't believe it, I'm, uh, usually I eat out three times a week at a restaurant uh, with my family or with my uh, uh, with his wife, and I've noticed that those skin patches I was telling you about, Dr. Naidu, are starting to heal, and I was like, really? And he, on his own, he wasn't doing anything different that he was supposed to be doing, but literally from changing his diet and eating at home, yeah. and not all days were healthy, there, there were struggles, the skin condition improved. You know, so you have these examples of people who, who really start to feel better when they make those changes that you have to write, you know, everyone might say them, mm. but it's, it's the impact of what they do. And I think that you're on to something 100% that we all forget because we, when we reach for the shortbread cookie, the, the bag of chips or whatever it might be, whatever our thing is, we're reaching for sometimes comfort or nostalgia or a, a sense of a feeling of happiness that that food we had linked in our brain to some memory sometime that gave us that boost of Absolutely. whatever, right? And so I think that for me, you're absolutely right. Um, it, it's looking at the decision wheel. Um, is there a way to rewire what the reward is in the decision? Because if you, you know, it's like, okay, what's the pr- the options presented? I make a decision and here's the reward. So it's like, mm-hmm. can you can you create a different reward, a one that's a bit more healthy, um, mm-hmm. that gives you the benefit of what it is you're trying to feel, think, experience um, in it? Exactly. Um, and, and, and also, if I could add to that, I think we have to do it with the feeling of non-judgment towards ourselves. I mentioned yes. self-care earlier on. I think that's really important to be kind to ourselves, especially now where there's so many other stresses. Because we are craving the sugar in that cookie or whatever it is that's sweet. Because, you know, sugar has been shown in um, basically brain imaging studies to act on the brain like drugs would. Mm-hmm. So we can't blame ourselves for the fact that we like it and then we either want more french fries because they have they have sugar that you can't even taste or other cookies or whatever it is because your you know your brain also has an impact on this and um, neuroscience is involved so i would say you know try try as you're suggesting as well you know start start to create those healthy habits if you can and don't take on too many at once yeah so um again y- you know you can go back and listen to this episode and, and, and take more notes and all the things are in our show notes as well that she's talking about. So if you simply go to the simplifierspodcast.com, you'll find it all there with all the links. Um, but I, I heard you say fruits, vegetables, legumes, um, seeds, and beans. These are the things that we need to stock in our pantry. Anything else? Spices as well? Sorry. Yes. Nuts, nuts, seeds, and beans. Yep. Prebiotics and probiotics. We broke that down. Yep. Yep. Um, 
and um, so part of that is fermented foods. You know, mm-hmm. miso is a fermented food. Yep. Kimchi is a Korean uh, pickle. Yeah. Um, I would also, again, here suggest making it at home or checking the one that you buy because it is uh, does have tend to have a lot of sugar. So you yeah. just want to watch for that. Um, things like sauerkraut. So you want to have, you know, if one of these appeal to you or kefir, the sour yogurt, again, unfruited and unsweetened. Mm-hmm. Those are things that, and by the way, you know, you can make kefir at home. So that's that's another another thing you can add to your armamentarium. And then spices, you know, um, capsaicin in chili pepper, turmeric um, with the pinch of black pepper, wow. ginger and garlic all have had um, immune boosting properties. But again, I'm not saying go and get pe- pills or capsules of them. I'm just saying cook with them. Keep yeah. them, you know, keep them either as a dried spice if you can or a fresh spice because those are good for you. And that's a good starting place um, to, to get cracking. And the ultimate goal is so that you, um, when you start to take control over the foods that you consume, you can start to wean yourself off of these medicines and, and things that are, are prescriptions that are being you know, prescribe like the sertraline or Zoloft or whatever, that you can actually take control of your health and your mental health um, with the foods that you eat. Exactly. And you, you know, want to do that with your doctors. Um, You kind of put the discussion with your doctor because he or she might feel that you want to do it more slowly. They want to Mm -hmm. make sure that you're feeling good before you start to take a medication. And, you know, the nutritional psychiatry is a field that has been been around for a very long time. It's only gotten the name in the last decade. But we've always been trying to help people through the use of nutrition. And the best way to think about it is if you're severely ill and you're severely depressed or, you know, feeling suicidal or... We have a, some know someone who has a manic episode or has lost yeah. touch with reality. Who does not the first line? But once they get some form of treatment with a doctor, yep. food is a huge part of how they can recover. So, you know, even from the beginning, if they feel well enough to eat well, absolutely. But it, it, it's not going to take away the acuity of that episode. But you can certainly work with your doctor to decide what dose of medication you need and how to feel better from them. Mm. And so if any of this is intriguing to you, I highly recommend checking out Dr. Uma's latest book. Uh, it's called This Is Your Brain on Food. Now, in the UK, it's going to have a slightly different title, right? What's it called in the UK? In the UK, it's releasing um, uh, as the mo- the Food Mood Connection. So it'll have the same cover, Great. same content, um, and I think we changed the spelling of some of the words so of that it, it fits with the uh, English vocabulary and grammar. And uh, but everything else is the same. Fantastic! So the um, the book is being released in the UK right around September 2020, and uh, the book is being released in uh, the states right now. So wherever you can buy books online or otherwise, uh, you can find her book. Uh, this is your brain on food: an indispensable guide to the surprising food that really help fight depression, OCD, anxiety, ADHD, trauma, and so much more. So I highly recommend uh, getting your hands on it. And as you say, you know, if you have any of those specific conditions, you can zoom into a certain chapter of the book and start to learn about, okay, I've got OCD, so what foods should I embrace and what foods I should avoid, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. Amazing. You got it. Fantastic. So, um, Dr. Um, I have a few questions as we wrap up that I always like to ask everybody. And again, thank you so much for your time today. I, I think that it's this is pleasure. incredibly important information. And if we can just take one simple step at a time, I think we all can feel a bit more empowered by the food mm-hmm. and drinks that we consume um, in the next you know, months, Mm -hmm. six months to the year. So Mm -hmm. first question is this, what's one book or blog that you're reading these days that's either inspiring you or poking holes and challenging your belief system? Um, So it's an, uh, it's a blog written by young uh, medical students and doctors. And it's, I want to say it's called MD Lingo. Mm -hmm. Um, and really what it's about is they're, they're debunking myths about nutrition. Um, all of them, you know, talk about some form of food and other topics that they're trying to speak about differently. And I have mm. a lot of fun reading it yeah. because, you know, you'll read about things like, did you know, you know, chocolate is a fermented food and it could actually therefore be good for your gut. And, you know, stuff that we don't think about and talk about in those terms. So that's a blog that I'm having a lot of fun with. Fantastic. Uh, well, we will put the link in the show notes for people if they want to check out that blog as well. So, 
So tell us who's one person in your network, somebody that you know personally, you just feel is up to brilliant things and we could shine mm-hmm. a spotlight on them and who knows, maybe one day we'll have them on the podcast as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to name one of my um, medical mentors who happens to be male and who really helped me to understand nutrition better because yeah. he um, you know, would help guide the process of the book um, by helping me break down some of the science behind it. Okay. And and that person is uh, someone who wrote my book, Dr. Walter Willett, So Brilliant. Okay. I, I just think that his, his career has been amazing, and I, I follow what he does. Excellent. Well, we will definitely link up with him. And, and also, if people want to find out more about him, they can uh, click in the show notes as well. So I believe that gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me, what's one thing you're grateful for today? Um, you know, I found myself uh, waking up this morning and it was going to be a busy day and I decided to take a moment and to take a deep breath and to be grateful for having the opportunities rather than thinking of it being, oh, this is such a busy day, I've got to sit with this, so-and-so is looking for that, I've got this meeting on, and and really to take a deep breath, take a step back and say, you know, you going to talk to me today. That's fun, you know, and 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 not just saying that. It was like, how do you how do you in that moment go from overwhelm to where's the joy in this? And and I'm so grateful that I have you know a safe place to live, and I I had this opportunity to share my work, yeah. and it, it really helped to reset my moment. Um, and that was just from today, so. So thank you for asking. Oh, and I'm grateful for you as well. So thank you for, again, making time today. So all of your um, social media links are in the show notes. Again, if people want to get connected to you or check out your book, again, go to thesimplifierspodcast.com and find it there. My last question for you is this, uh, Dr. Uma. Someone somewhere is listening to this episode right now, and she is having... um, just a not very happy tummy. <laughs> sure, her stomach is in knots. Her head feels like it's going 80 bazillion miles an hour. Things are very stressful and she's dealing with some big change. From a point of view of her immune system, what's one thing you could whisper into her ear right now just to encourage her in this moment? Mm-hmm. I would say take a deep breath and realize that there are ways that you can get help. Um, that this too shall pass. This is something that is correctable in the work that I do. Um, so if, if it's something you can do and you have to go buy it in a store, get some turmeric and black pepper. You probably have some black pepper at home. Um, think about having vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, mm. um, asparagus, Brussels sprouts that are tend to be in the same family that will, if you can even chop them up, steam them, have them in a salad, they are going to start to feed your gut the right way. And even that simple step will be a good way and a good start to starting to feel better. Mm, And this too shall pass. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Uma. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. 